In the 1950s near the Californian desert, there's a company town called Victory where happy families live perfect lives. Every morning the husbands go to work at Victory headquarters outside town, and the housewife stays behind taking care of the house and practicing ballet under their teacher Shelley. The wives aren't allowed to ask any questions about their husband's work, and visiting the headquarters is forbidden to them. One of these many happy couples is Alice and Jack, who have a very active intimate life and love throwing parties for their neighbors, especially Alice's best friend Bunny and her husband. The couple also has a favorite song that Alice likes to hum whenever she's doing her chores. Sometimes the whole town shakes for a few seconds and Alice tries to ask Jack if it has anything to do with Victory's projects, but he refuses to answer and Alice is fine with dropping the subject quickly. One afternoon after ballet, Bunny and Alice watch a group of men in red jumpsuits help the new neighbor move while gossiping about the fact their friend Margaret didn't go to class, which isn't surprising because Margaret has become the town's outcast after a mysterious incident. Later Alice is in her garden when she suddenly notices Margaret standing in her backyard with a toy plane in her hands and her eyes closed, because apparently she's having a weird vision of a pair of eyes opened in the dark. Alice doesn't know what to make of her and ignores it. While getting dinner ready, Alice discovers all the eggs in her carton are strangely empty, but she forgets about them when her dinner begins to burn in the oven. Some days later, Alice is attending a pool party at Shelley's house and humming her song when Bunny asks her to stop because she's tired of hearing it. Alice realizes then that she doesn't know what song it is, but it's always been stuck in her head. As the melody plays in her head, weird images appear in front of Alice's eyes, but once again she forgets about them when Bunny distracts her. The party is paused for a moment by Shelley and her husband Frank, the Victory CEO, to offer a speech to welcome the new neighbors into town. The speech is suddenly interrupted by Margaret, who wonders why they're here when they shouldn't be. Her husband takes her away but now the mood has become awkward, so Frank takes over the conversation to remind everyone that they're here because they're changing the world by building a little town based on safety and order. Afterward, Alice is still worried about Margaret and goes looking for her, only to find her in her house being given some sort of medicine by her husband. Margaret tries to tell Alice that she isn't fine, that she's had bad dreams, and that they're hiding her there, but her husband closes the door to keep Alice out of it. Alice returns to the party and finds Jack in Frank's room fixing his tie. To her shock, Jack starts getting frisky with her right there. Things suddenly get weird again when Frank shows up and begins watching them in a very weird way, but soon he leaves without saying a word, and Alice never tells Jack about it. The next day, Alice and her friends are doing some shopping when the subject of Margaret comes up. They comment on how she's behaving weirdly since the accident, but Bunny cuts in and reminds them it wasn't an accident. Margaret broke the only rule they had and took her child deep into the desert because she saw something, probably a hallucination. When they found her, she was alone with her son's toy plane, and they never found the child, although Margaret swears they took him away from her as punishment. The conversation suddenly interrupted when the ground shakes again, but the women don't react because they're used to it. One of them wonders if the rumors of the men developing weapons are true, but an angry bunny cuts her off, reminding her the wives' only mission is to support their husbands and not to ask questions. Later at night, Alice begins having extremely weird dreams, and she can't stop thinking about them the next day. She decides she needs some fresh air and takes the trolley, but instead of getting off at the mall, she stays so she can enjoy the view of the desert, which the driver finds pretty weird. Suddenly, a plane that looks like Margaret's toy appears in the sky falling down until it crashes in the middle of the desert. There never was a plane flying above this area before and Alice wants to check it out, especially since they may need help, but the bus driver refuses to take her there because it goes against the rules. Alice breaks the rules anyway and walks deep into the desert until she eventually comes across a hill with a spiral road surrounding it. She makes the extra effort to go all the way up until she finds a mysterious dome and begins calling for help, but nobody answers. Alice is scared but she still wants answers, so she slowly approaches the dome until she finally dares to put her hands on the glass walls. This movement suddenly shakes her body and makes her throw her head back as a series of weird disturbing images appear in her eyes and Frank's voice continues to talk about leaving chaos behind. When Alice finally gets to blink again, she finds herself on her bed at home. Confused and scared, Alice goes to the kitchen, where she discovers Jack trying to cook because he didn't want to wake her up. It turns out Alice had already returned when Jack came home, but she can't remember how. She mentions the plane crash only to hear Jack say there hasn't been any crash, otherwise everyone in town would be talking about it. Alice gets upset and blames it all on bad dreams, and Jack distracts her with some comforting touches and jokes about cooking. The next day, Alice is cleaning the windows as usual when suddenly, the wall behind her begins moving and presses her against the glass. Alice is terrified as she tries to push back, and just with a blink, the wall is back in its place because it was only a hallucination. At that moment, the phone rings, and Alice picks it up to hear Margaret ask her if she saw it. She points out they're lying to them and that they should leave, but Alice can't take it and reminds her friend she isn't crazy before hanging up. The conversation won't leave Alice's mind though, and during her next ballet class, she's shocked to see her reflection has become Margaret. At first Margaret copies Alice's every move, but suddenly she puts her hands on the glass and starts hitting her head, making Alice yell in panic. Nobody else in the room knows what she's reacting to, 
and when Alice turns around, Margaret is gone. Worried about the meaning behind this, Alice rushes back home and finds Margaret standing on top of her house. Alice yells at her in tears, trying to make her stop, but Margaret ignores her and ends things. Alice panics again and tries to reach Margaret, but she can barely take two steps before the men in red appear to drag her away. In the evening, Alice tries to tell Jack what happened, but Jack doesn't believe her because Margaret's husband is with her at the hospital and has told everyone she's fine, it was just an accident while she was cleaning the windows. Alice hates that she's being treated as if she's crazy and demands to know the truth, asking Jack about his job and what the company is hiding from everyone until he finally snaps. He yells at her to remind her answering those questions could mean losing their wonderful life together and asks her to drop the subject before leaving her alone for the night. Alice is disturbed to go back to sleep thus she tries to distract herself by watching some TV, this triggers a new hallucination where she finds herself drowning in a pool. It feels very similar to the way the wall trapped her, but before she can grasp the meaning, she blinks and finds herself standing against the window as if she had tried to leave. The next morning, Alice is wrapping the dinner leftovers and doesn't really have a good hold of herself when her hands move on their own and wrap part of her body. Alice snaps out of it after a few seconds and removes the wrap, taking a deep breath as she finally accepts she's losing it. Moments later, Jack brings Dr. Collins to do a checkup. The doctor decides this must be stress caused by the shock of seeing Margaret fall, and when Alice tries to explain what really happened, Collins says the mind can sometimes change reality because it's overwhelmed with grief. He also tries to prescribe some medicine, but both Jack and Alice refuse to take it, promising she doesn't need it. At that moment, Alice notices Collins has classified files about Margaret in his briefcase, prompting her to ask what happened to her. Collins explains Margaret suffered from outbursts and paranoia, which didn't allow her husband to do his job in peace, so he was fired from victory and Margaret was sent somewhere else to get the help she needs. Afterward, Collins leaves the house and accidentally forgets his briefcase. As soon as he and Jack are out, Alice jumps on the briefcase to look for clues, but she's interrupted by Collins coming back when he realizes what he forgot. Alice pretends she had picked the briefcase up to hand it to him and luckily her act is believed. Once the Collins has left for good, it's revealed Alice did get to steal Margaret's files but all the pages have been blacked out. Since the files are useless, Margaret burns them in the fireplace while thinking about Margaret and drinking whiskey to silence the guilt. She's still drinking moments later when she's taking a bath and her mind begins starts to drift, making her see all those disturbing images again, although this time she can also see the sweet moments of a couple holding each other. She suddenly snaps out of it when Jack comes home and plays some music, and while Alice is still in shock, Jack comes to see her to ask out of nowhere if they should have a baby. Alice promises to think about it. Later in the evening, the two of them attend a fancy party organized at a restaurant by Frank, who won't stop watching her while discussing things with Collins in a corner. This puts Alice on the edge, and she begins to fall into a breakdown when a dancer appears in the room to offer a show that reminds Alice of her visions. As tears begin to fall, Alice asks Jack to take her home, but Jack ignores her because Frank's going on the stage to make a big announcement. To everyone's surprise, Frank calls Jack to join him and announces he's getting a promotion. Everyone begins celebrating, but this is the last straw that pushes Alice into a full breakdown and she runs to the bathroom, where she sees the vision of the couple again. Bunny suddenly shows up to check on her and Alice tries to explain everything, but Bunny cuts her short, scolding her for breaking the rules. She thinks Alice is behaving like a child and trying to ruin her husband's big night, so she needs to get herself together and be a good wife. Alice has no choice but to go back to their routine and try to forget about everything. A few days later, Jack organizes a dinner party at his house, which Frank and Shelley also attend. While Alice is busy cooking, Frank approaches to tell her she fascinates him. He's always wanted someone to challenge him because great men can only change history if they're pushed, so he hopes that Alice will continue to push in the future. During dinner, Alice decides to sit at the head of the table instead of letting Jack have the spot because she wants to look directly at Frank while they eat. When the usual chit-chat begins, Alice interrupts it to ask the guests about their lives before coming to this town and points out how the same few backstories repeat among all the neighbors. They're told to remember these stories because they want them to forget the real ones, like what happened to Margaret. Jack tries to make Alice stop, but Frank asks her to keep going, prompting Alice to go on a rant about everything she saw and how Frank is lying to everyone to create his perfect little world. Frank keeps his face neutral and tells everyone Alice is suffering from the same psychosis that Margaret did, even accusing her of having been in his bedroom. Everyone is feeling extremely uncomfortable, and Shelley snaps, calling Alice out for making a scene and insulting her husband before she stands up and leaves. All the other guests follow her out, and while Jack goes to open the door, Frank stays to tell Alice he expected more from her before he leaves as well. Alice is left furious, and she snaps again when Jack comes back and accuses her of trying to sabotage his big night. She immediately comes to him to swear that wasn't the case, Jack is more important to her than this life in victory and they need to leave this place before it destroys their relationship. After hearing lots of begging, Jack finally gives in and accepts to run away together. Alice wastes no time and rushes to pack the minimal necessities before joining Jack in the car, who shocks her when he suddenly apologizes. 
Alice doesn't understand what's going on until the men in red show up to drag her away, and Jack begins crying while he hears his wife's cries for help. Alice is taken to the hospital to receive electroshock therapy. While her whole body hurts, she starts seeing those visions of the couple again and discovers it's her and Jack living in modern times and humming that annoying song. This Jack has lost his job, but Alice says it's okay because she can take another shift at the hospital, where she works as a doctor. Taking double shifts begins taking a toll on this Alice, and when she arrives home late, Jack doesn't help her mood by failing to make dinner and having the nerve to get offended when Alice is too tired to get busy with him. In the end, Jack spends his night listening to Frank's podcast promoting a way for men to find their true selves away from the society that smothers them. Sometime later, Alice wakes up again in the hospital in victory. Collins announces she's been fixed, so Alice is sent back to town, where she begins living her old routine again as if nothing had happened. Days pass calmly until one evening, Jack comes from work singing that annoying song again. This time, Alice manages to remember the lyrics, and this triggers a memory of her being dragged through a floor she can't recognize. It's then revealed that the Jack from her visions is real and he's applied to be part of the Victory Project, where he can choose to have the perfect life. This has granted him access to a special machine that he keeps at home, and Alice is connected to it 24-7, because her life in Victory is all a simulation. This is the same for all the wives there, and like the other men, Jack connects himself to it every day for only a few hours, and he disconnects when he enters the headquarters in the desert. The rest of the time, he is in charge of keeping Alice's real body well and has to work at some low job to pay for the machine. Back in Victory, Alice falls to the floor in pain, overwhelmed by the images that just hit her mind. She demands an explanation from Jack, who immediately gets defensive and yells that he did it so they could have a perfect life because they had been miserable. Alice still believes he's behaved like a twat for taking her autonomy and trying to convince her she's crazy. She's also worried about the other wives and the kids, but Jack immediately clarifies the kids aren't real, they're part of the simulation as well. Then Jack falls to his knees to beg for forgiveness as he clings to Alice, making it hard for her to breathe. Tired of her husband's lies, Alice grabs a glass and uses it to hit Jack to knock him out. What she doesn't know is that dying in victory also kills you in real life, and as the real Jack closes his eyes, Frank gets a call telling him what happened. At that moment, Bunny enters the house because she's heard some noises and immediately covers Jack's body before trying to calm Alice down. Alice tries to explain it all and Bunny confesses she already knows, she chose the simulation because it's the only way she can have her kids back after they died in real life. She also explains Alice needs to go to the headquarters and disconnect herself because Jack can't do it for her in the actual machine anymore. Alice is afraid but does as Bunny asks, finding all the neighbors are coming out as well. As all the street lights begin exploding, the women are started to notice something is off, but the men are concentrating on asking about Jack and trying to stop Alice. Bunny comes out to push the men off, giving Alice the chance to get in a car and drive away just in time before the men in red arrive, stealing cars to go after her. A chase begins through the streets, and while Alice manages to leave town with no trouble, things get more complicated in the desert when the men in red begin to hit her car with theirs. Dr. Collins is also coming in his own car and accelerates to help catching her, but when Alice finds herself surrounded, she quickly moves the car out of the way and causes Collins and the others to crash against each other. Frank receives the news of Collins' death at home with a call on speaker, so Shelley hears what's going on too. While Frank's busy giving orders, Shelley approaches him and stabs him, claiming it's her turn now. In the desert, Alice continues driving until she finds the hill and takes the road with the car, but the vehicle gets stuck on a bad turn. Still not ready to give up, Alice jumps out of the car and begins running, thinking the car blocking the ways enough to stop the others. Unfortunately the men in red leave their cars too and start climbing the hill to try to catch up with her, so Alice has to push her body to the extreme in order to run all the way up. When she reaches the dome, Alice hallucinates Jack hugging her and asking her to stay, she also remembers their time together in real life. At that moment, the men in red appear behind her, which reminds her of what she has to do, Alice runs to the wall and puts her hands on the glass, throwing her head back as the disturbing images come back to her mixed with some memories of the real her. Suddenly everything goes black, and Alice gasps. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.